but I'm going to show you the principles of how to make a balloon column for indoor use that's going to make sure that you can get it right absolutely first time. This column I'm going to be showing you how to make a spiral garland pattern. So you're going to need 14 11 inch balloons, I'm using pearl pink, and you're going to need another 14 in a different colour, I'm using pearl lilac. And I've also got a foil topper, so that's this lovely pram baby stroller. And if you don't have this balloon, don't worry, you can pick another one and you may not want to use these colours. So this is showing you how to make a column and you can just make it your own and adapt it to suit your theme, to suit your celebration. Take two of your 11 inch balloons and I like to use one of each colour for this and I'll explain why in a second. We're going to size to seven inches so just pre-inflate your balloon and then just pass balloon through the aperture just letting a little bit of air out as you do so and then just put a twist in the neck of that balloon and that will trap the air and stop the air coming out whilst you size the second balloon. Okay you just want the balloon to be able to touch the sides of that opening okay and then once you've sized that one take the necks and wrap the necks across one another and round a couple of times and tie. Okay, and then you just want to round those off slightly and make another one of these. Each of these is called a duplet and we want to combine them together to make a cluster of four and we do that just by placing them one over the other. Okay, now the reason I said I wanted you to do one of each colour is that when we place them together like that, you've got the two colours together here and the two colours together here. And what I like to do to make sure I connect them together really well I just take this colour that's next to the, um, the lilac, pass it over once and that's connected the two together really easily, okay? So you're not having to wrap around multiple times, which you don't need to do for an indoor column like this. Okay. Take your 260 and just, I like to just snip off the end and I do this because I don't want to get any um, air bubbles in the 260 as I attach it, okay? And then just take that nozzle, pass it through the centre of your cluster, wrap it around a couple of times so it's nice and secure, okay? That's what you've got. Take another cluster of four, take hold of the 260 in the middle of your first cluster and you want to place your second cluster on top and pull that 260 through but you want to make sure that your um, colours are offset okay so the um, lilac one is in between these two lilac ones you're not trying to position it directly over the top so they will fit naturally uh, on top of one another like that and then just take your 260 wrap around a couple of times and the key to getting a good well-balanced column is consistency of sizing. So if you've made sure that your balloons are sized consistently, the same size as each other, then you know that's, that's a really good uh, basis for your column. Take your water weight and take the inner neck, pull that into the base through both tiers, so it's coming out here, and then just wrap that neck around couple of times you're going to have to move this 260 out of the way a little bit and then just pull that up okay take your next cluster and again position that on the top make sure that your spiral is going round in the same direction and just wrap around that 260 a couple of times and we continue to build up the column in this way Take your next cluster, pull that up and wrap around. Do the same with the next cluster, pull that up and wrap around. Okay, so you can see the pattern is spiraling around. Okay, your next cluster and make sure the pattern is spiraling around correctly. Take your two sixes and wrap around. 
Okay, and then we've got one more cluster to go. Position your final cluster on the top, okay? And just wrap around that 260 until you run out of 260. And just keep going round and that's going to secure everything. So there are two things to really think about when you are making your indoor balloon column. So one is to make sure your weight is heavy enough to support the column and its height. And the other thing is to make sure that your balloons are consistently sized. And that's why it's important to use something like a sizing box or a pair of chairs back to back and you've measured the distance between them. And that's how you get uh, a well-balanced column. Because otherwise, if this balloon, for example, was quite a bit smaller than the rest, it wouldn't support the layers above. So I've really been encouraged by you, the, the audience, the viewers, who've asked for some beginner's decor tutorials. So that's what I'm doing. So if you're enjoying this, just, just pop that like button. Yes, pop the button, pop the like button. That will send up the balloon and let me know that you are enjoying uh, these tutorials. And if you want more beginner's tutorials, then please do leave me a comment, let me know the sort of thing you're wanting to learn uh, because that really helps me know what sort of uh, tu tutorials and videos to make for the future. So, so just keep inflating with your hand pump. If you want instructions on, just keep inflating through your hand pump until you're almost full. So you can see this particular balloon has some extra little chambers here and here. So you want to make sure that those are inflated. Okay, and just check, you just want to be able to walk your fingers along the side of the balloon like that. The balloon will feel nice and full, but the uh, creases will still be here and the balloon will ping back into position when you, when you do that. So that's a good indicator that your balloon is correctly inflated. Next, I'm taking a 260 and I've just cut off the tip end. I'm just going to take hold of that neck here, place the 260 over the top and start to roll that neck up and that valve up. Okay, so I'm just rolling. And then when I get to this point, which is about an inch away here, I fold the neck in half. So I just pinch that in half like that. It's tricky to see with these wheels in place. Okay, and then take the ends of your balloon and just tie them in a knot. Okay, so just pull one end and then the other end and then the other end and then the other end and it will gradually tighten up and then once you've tied one knot, you can tie a second knot. Okay. And that just gives you a nice finish here. It just finishes off this neck here quite nicely and neatly. One of the things I always do is when I put the uh, column or the piece of decor that I'm working on onto the floor, I always put the base into one of these decor bags or party bags. This one happens to be a party bag. Um, the decor bags are much larger and you can get those from your balloon wholesaler or distributor. But I like to put the, the base into a bag as I put it onto the floor because that helps to protect it. So it will protect the display from carpet fibres um, or any little prickly things that might be uh, on the uh, floor. And if you want to, I should have mentioned earlier, if you want to, you can double stuff the first layer of your base. If you want your first layer of your base to be just that little bit more durable, then I really do recommend double stuffing if that's a, a bit of a concern for you. So that's quite a good thing to do. And for these columns, you can actually size these balloons anywhere from about seven inches up to nine inches. So for an indoor column like this, I would recommend between seven and nine inches, but you will see in just a moment why I've gone for seven inches in this particular case. And that's because of the wheels on this uh, balloon buggy. Uh, you will see that there is a, a gap here that isn't terribly big. And so when I come to 
position the balloon on top of the collar, I'm going to want to make sure that uh, the wheels will fit neatly between the, um, between the balloons of the collar. Okay, so just take the 260 ends and pull those into your column at the top here and just going to pull them as tautly down to pull them down okay and wrap around in a figure of eight okay and we're going to do that front and back and then just let go so wrap those around keep going around and that's going to secure that balloon to the top of your column. So you'll see what I said about the, um, the wheels here. So I just want to position this balloon so that it sits nicely and we can still see the wheels, okay? So let's just recap on the main learning points from this video. So a column like this, it's only suitable for indoor use. It's not heavy enough. There simply isn't enough weight in this column for this to be suitable for outdoor use. So this is indoor use only. Also, if you want to go any taller, if you want your column to be taller than this, you're going to need a bigger footprint. So you're going to need to be sizing those balloons to eight inches or to nine inches. And the other thing to bear in mind, my absolute top tip, so if you remember nothing else from this video, please remember this, and that is consistency of sizing. So be sure that when you're sizing the balloons, whether you're sizing them to eight inches or nine inches or seven inches, but whatever size you've decided upon, make sure each of the balloons in this column, the latex balloons in this column, a sized to that same size. So it's very much worth taking the time to use your sizing box and to uh, size the balloons correctly or to get those chair backs back to back and to measure the gap and to pass your balloon between the two. So those are my top tips. Remember to um, pop the like button. I really hope you've enjoyed the video. I've enjoyed making it. I've enjoyed spending time with you guys and uh, do leave me a comment. I'll see you soon. Take care.